Midday Winter Solstice. I'm Annie Laurie Gaylord. Welcome to Free Thought Radio. And I'm Dan Barker, your friendly neighborhood atheist. This is the weekend of December 18th and 19th, 2010. And it's that time of year again. December is always a very busy month for the Freedom From Religion Foundation. We are monitoring a bizarre situation in Kentucky right now where the governor there has promised very generous tax incentives to a group to construct a huge replica of Noah's Ark and a Bible-based theme park. They're going to be calling it the Ark Encounter. Here's Kentucky Governor Bashir explaining how the park is designed to bring the Bible back to life. The project is called the Ark Encounter. It's a theme park designed to bring to life the various stories and places in the Bible. The primary feature of the proposed 160-acre complex will be a full-scale replica of Noah's Ark. There was a December joint press conference between Kentucky public officials and the religious groups behind this Ark project. By the way, the Ark is the idea of the same Christian ministry that runs the notorious Creation Museum in Petersburg, Kentucky. Now, here's a representative from one of the various religious groups answering a question about whether there will be dinosaurs on this ark. Will there be dinosaurs on the ark? I'm sure we'll have uh, representative kinds of animals on the ark to include dinosaurs. So. We don't have live animals. But Probably no live dinosaurs, but we will have a lot of, uh, <laughs> we will have a lot of live animals. But they do think there will be dinosaurs represented. There were dinosaurs on the act. They actually think there was an ark or, and a worldwide flood. This is the same people that, uh, that put up that anti-evolution uh, uh, creation, creationism museum in Kentucky that I visited, and it's really silly. Uh, the developers of this ark encounter are a profit-making company. They expect to spend about $150 million to employ 900 people and attract... 1.6 million visitors the first year. They say that with the Creation Museum only 45 miles away, they'll create a kind of Christian tourism corridor, attracting busloads of churches and Christian schools. The theme park, this new one, will include, and we're not kidding you, it will include a Tower of Babel and a journey through the Old Testament, including special effects such as the Ten Plagues of Egypt. And it doesn't sound very safe. And the Kentucky's um, Tourism Development Act will mean that the developers can get up to 25% of their development costs over 10 years from sales tax generated by the park back. The Ark Encounter stands to receive a quarter of its investment back from taxpayers, or that's $37.5 million. Now listen to Grant County Judge Executive Darrell Link of Kentucky also speaking at that press conference. I think this uh, project uh, accentuates the faith of the people and the values of the people in Grant County tremendously. It accentuates our faith and values, and we're proud to have these guys located in Grant County. And I would suggest that if I asked for a show of hands here in this audience, that the majority of the folks here would be proud to have it uh, here in Kentucky as well. At the end of the day, it's uh, as the governor said, it's for profit and it's bringing jobs and it's bringing a tremendous amount of in industry and the spinoff uh, is, uh, to that economic uh, industry is uh, tremendous as well. So does the majority rule on state church issues? ARC Encounter consultant Kerry Summers explains that they have not yet decided whether or not they will engage in discriminatory hiring practices by requiring employees to sign a statement of faith, which is a known hiring practice of this group that's behind it called Answers in Genesis. This is a very expensive project. There is a large workforce, and you you want a certain type of person. You, there's no discriminatory uh, hiring going on. And, you know, as far as the, the statement of faith that's used at uh, Answers in Genesis, that's that's Answers in Genesis. As far as the investment group, we are, we're wrestling with that right now, to be just blatantly honest. I could say yes or I could say no and everybody would be happy, but that's not the case. So we're, we're working through that right now. This week, under some pressure, Governor Bashir admitted that if these groups discriminate, they're not eligible for the tax credit. So these will be your tax dollars at work, promoting fundamentalist Christianity, creationism, and, we have to say, 
ignorance. FFRF has been busily researching the constitutionality of this setup, and we'll keep you posted. Otherwise, it's been a very busy week for us, as it, as it always is this time of year. By the winter solstice, um, coming up on Tuesday, we'll be placing one of our famous winter solstice displays in the Capitol building in Jackson, Mississippi. And we remind everyone that the winter solstice is the real reason for the, the season. The winter solstice is the darkest day of the year, Tuesday, December 1st. This natural holiday signals the return of the sun, the return of the new year, and has been celebrated for millennia in the Northern Hemisphere with festivals of lights, evergreens, feasts, and exchanges of gifts. And we like to say we're willing to share the season with Christians, but they should recognize and acknowledge that they really stole Christmas from all of its pagan origins really predicated on a natural holiday. Um, Mississippi members have urged us to place our sign in the winter, uh, the winter solstice sign in the state capitol in the rotunda of Mississippi because they allowed a nativity scene for the first time. And here's some news coverage about that. A nativity scene at the state capitol is stirring some controversy all the way to Wisconsin. Members of Mississippi's 9-11 Remembrance Foundation sponsored the display showing Joseph, Mary, and the baby Jesus. It went up last Friday on the first floor of the capitol in the rotunda. But now a freedom of religion group based out of Wisconsin wants to counter the Christmas display with its own message. News Channel 12's Chris Williams looks at the battle over freedom of religion in a public place. It's part of our heritage. It's part of the entire country's heritage. Justin Bernard says he set up the nativity scene at the request of Lieutenant Governor Phil Bryant. It was paid for with private funds and is also a tribute to troops overseas. I'm just putting up a little something for them in remembrance because they're going over there to fight for our freedom. But a Wisconsin-based atheist group wants their own display, too. They believe religious figures do not belong in any public buildings across the country. When the government says it, that there's a public forum, um, and that you can put religion in this public forum, then we will be there with our sign. The group plans to display a plaque like this one inside the Capitol at the end of the month. It says keep church and state separate with a few other beliefs. There are no gods, no devils, no angels, no heaven or hell. There is only our natural world. Bernard says he's not offended. If she'd like to put a sign up right beside it, that's that's fine. Bernard says the foundation is not trying to attack or offend anybody by putting up this nativity scene. They're just remembering Christmas the way they want to. The word Christmas has Christ in it, and Christ in the manger. I mean, this is what it's all about. We have a huge controversy going on in Brookville, Indiana, which has a large nativity display all by itself on the Franklin County Courthouse lawn. That's unlawful, according to the Supreme Court. A manger scene can't be by itself on public property. Now, at FFRF, we don't think there should be any manger scenes on public property, but the Supreme Court has limitations. And according to the court, it has to be part of an overall larger secular display. And it's not. But what's so bizarre about this display in Indiana is that they have put it circling a flagpole owned by the county on the county courthouse lawn, and they've put an angel on the flagpole. Is it an American flag or what? Or yes, of course. So our staff attorney, Rebecca Market, got right on it. She wrote a firm letter about it. And let's listen to some of the fallout. Let every heart prepare him room. And then nature sing. And then nature sing. The courthouse lawn has had room for a nativity display for almost 50 years. But its days may be numbered. A group called the Freedom From Religion Foundation has written a letter asking that the nativity be removed. Now, to me, if it goes to court, it should be thrown out as a frivolous lawsuit, and amen. The group's not threatening to go to court yet, but it does lay out court rulings that make it clear a city-owned nativity on county-owned property steps over the line separating church and state. And I've never heard of anybody complaining about it. I don't know, have you guys have ever, ever heard anybody? County workers filed out onto the courthouse lawning, making it clear where they stand. We are tired of minority groups speaking up and being offended, where the majority of us are really offended. So I think if they don't like it here, well then, don't stay here. While the display represents Christian beliefs, Franklin County Commissioner Tom Wilson says those are the values of this community. The county, who, who owns the county? The people do. The people in this this community own the county. It's, it's their tax dollars. It's their property. It's their Christian values, and if they want it here, I think it should have it. 
but they may not all want it. The Freedom From Religions Foundation would only tell me the complaint about the display came from a member and that they have members in this area. Supporters of the Nativity plan a rally this weekend. In the meantime, folks all over Brookville are signing petitions to keep it. High school freshman Adrian Bolser put the petitions together, and her mom says it's clear people here don't want to back down. I think they're going to find out that Franklin County really does believe in Jesus Christ, and we don't settle well when you try to take our faith away. So do we put uh, the First Amendment up to a local majority vote? Is that how we run this country? So now here's the coverage of that promised rally. It's going to stay until a judge orders me to move it. It's a fight over a hometown favorite, a community rallying behind a nativity scene. Controversy is unfolding in the small town of Brookville, Indiana, after a Wisconsin-based group filed a complaint asking county leaders to remove the scene from the courthouse lawn. Fox 19's Emily Wood spoke with both sides on the issue and is live now with more. Emily? Kim, I'm at Fountain Square, standing between the Christmas tree and the Hanukkah menorah, which share the holiday season display down here in downtown Cincinnati. But the scene is different in Franklin County, Indiana, where people gathered early this afternoon to rally in support of the nativity scene. They argue that it is not unconstitutional. They say they are prepared to take this fight all the way to the Supreme Court and want it to stay right where it is. This is the reason for Christmas season. The Holy Word of God. Christians living in Brookville are ready to push back after a formal complaint to remove the nativity from government property. The Freedom From Religion Foundation says placing the scene in front of the courthouse is in violation of the First Amendment. This was on private property, fine. But when this is in a, a government uh, setting with a flagpole, it seems to be tying being a good... American citizen with being a Christian and that is making outsiders of non-Christians in your community. People in Brookville are signing a petition and say Christians have the same freedoms. This is our right. This is our season. These uh, these people who don't want to um, celebrate or don't want us to put out these uh, um, symbols of Christ Christianity don't have a problem with taking paid holidays. County Commissioner Tom Wilson is willing to compromise by making the display more secular by adding a Santa Claus, reindeer, and additional holiday lights. We're not so close-minded or, or uh, to think that other people don't believe differently, you know, like the Jewish people or anybody. If they want to come and set something up tasteful, that's nice. I have no problem with them doing that. But the foundation says according to legal precedent, the Nativity cannot be the focus of the display. Out of the Kim, the Freedom From Religion Foundation says it has not heard from the county since filing the complaint. County Commissioner Tom Wilson says it has sent it to the county's attorney, which is being reviewed, and they will have a response after the first of the year. Yeah, this uh, response after the first of the year when it's an unlawful display. In, the, in other words, we're just going to keep it up till the end of the year. And, and this has gotten a lot of coverage besides local coverage is getting uh, coverage in Indiana. And CNN uh, headline news has covered it. And um, you heard the bigotry and the small-mindedness. And this is the we're Christians, we dominate. Well, they're proving our point, aren't they? These comments are showing that they, in fact, do think it's a Christian community. And they talked about, we're going to take this all the way to the Supreme Court. It's already been to the Supreme Court. This issue's, Several times. It's, uh, this issue's already been decided, and, and Rebecca's letter pointed that out with uh, the precedents. And, uh, yeah, we're working with what we have to work with, which is, is some limitations by the Supreme Court that we don't like. We think no law means no law. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. But uh, certainly the court has been very clear that you cannot have a nativity scene all by itself. And then to stick it in the middle of an enormous flagpole with the flag out, put an angel on it. Well, you can see how it has taught the people in the community um, to be small-minded, to feel that they uh, they are first-class citizens and no one else has rights. And that they would be gracious enough to permit, like the Jewish people, that guy said, or others to put up a tasteful sign of their own. They would let us. Well, if it's going to be turned into a public forum, they have to let the freedom from religion also, as we are doing in in uh, Jackson, Mississippi, and as we are doing right now in Loudoun County, Virginia, for the second year in a row, our mesh banner has returned 
to a courthouse there where they used to have only a, a nativity display until we and others complained. Mm-hmm. And now we're one of ten displays, and it's our there are no gods, uh, no mass, uh, no gods, no devils sign, and um, we'll be there if there's going to be a nativity display. 